What are the risk factors for not? Children with special needs, multiple siblings, or conditions like colic or GERD are at higher risk for OT. Boys are more likely to be victims of OT than girls, and children of families who live at or below the poverty level are at an increased risk for these injuries, and other types of child abuse. The perpetrators in about 70% of cases are males, usually either the baby's father or the mother's boyfriend, often someone in his early 20s. But anyone has the potential to shake a baby if he or she isn't able to handle stressful situations well, has poor impulse control, or has a tendency toward aggressive behavior. Substance abuse often plays a role in OT. How can OT be prevented? Abuse of head trauma is 100% preventable. A key aspect of prevention is increasing awareness of the potential dangers of shaking. Finding ways to ease the parent or caregiver's stress at the critical moments when a baby is crying can greatly reduce the risk to a child. Some hospital-based programs help new parents learn about and prevent shaking injuries and understand how to respond when infants cry. All Babies Cry is a national program that promotes infant soothing and ways to manage the stress of parenting. The program is divided into four parts. 1. What's normal about crying? 2. Comforting your baby. 3. Self-care tips for parents. 4. Colic and how to cope. The National Center on Shaken Baby Syndrome offers a prevention program. The period of purple crying, which can help parents and other caregivers understand crying in healthy infants and how to handle it. Another method that can help is the 5 S's approach, which stands for 1. Shushing, by using white noise or rhythmic sounds that mimic the constant whir of noise in the womb. Vacuum cleaners, hair dryers, clothes dryers, a running tub, or a white noise machine can all create this effect. 2. Side slash stomach positioning, placing the baby on the left side, to help with digestion, or on the belly while holding him or her. Babies should always be placed on their backs to sleep. 3. Sucking, letting the baby breastfeed or bottle feed, or giving the baby a pacifier or finger to suck on. 4. Swaddling, wrapping the baby in a blanket like a burrito to help him or her feel more secure. Hips and knees should be slightly bent and turned out. 5. Swinging gently, rocking in a chair, using an infant swing, or taking a car ride to help duplicate the constant motion the baby felt in the womb. If a baby in your care won't stop crying, you can also try the following. Make sure the baby's basic needs are met, for example, he or she isn't hungry and doesn't need to be changed. Check for signs of illness, like fever or swollen gums. Rock or walk with the baby. Sing or talk to the baby. Offer the baby a pacifier or a noisy toy. Take the baby for a ride in a stroller or strap into a child safety seat in the car. Hold the baby close against your body, and breathe calmly and slowly. Give the baby a warm bath. Pat or rub the baby's back. Call a friend or relative for support or to take care of the baby while you take a break. If nothing else works, put the baby on his or her back in the crib, close the door, and check on the baby in 10 minutes. Call your doctor if nothing seems to be helping the baby, in case there is a medical reason for the fussiness. To prevent aught. Parents and caregivers of infants need to learn how to respond to their own stress. It's important to tell anyone caring for a baby to never shake the infant. Talk about the dangers of shaking, and how it can be prevented. Reviewed by, Marjorie Hirschberger, MSN, RN. Date reviewed, March 2014. Thank you for listening to this Kids Health Audio Cast. The information you heard, is for educational purposes only. If you need medical advice, diagnoses, or treatment, consult your doctor. This audio cast is copyrighted by Kids Health and the Nemours Foundation. All rights are reserved. 
Visit www.kidshealth.org for more.